I went out to a few antique stores recently and I was hunting for bottles and unbeknownst to me until I got home, these two are made from the same manufacturer. But for this particular story, my bottles don't enter the story until towards the end. Now this story actually covers some different bottles along the way as well. So let's get started on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Once upon a time, in 1884, there was a beverage called Moxie. Now the word Moxie became synonymous with words like energy, pep, courage, determination, and spunk. I actually had Moxie on my bucket list of stories to do. I don't have a Moxie bottle yet, and I didn't know that these bottles were actually going to lead me to the Moxie story. But anyways, let's get started. The story starts with Dr. Augustine Thompson. He was born in 1835 in Maine. He was married with two boys. He was a doctor with a practice. Here, he's listed in 1885 as a physician. Like many doctors of that time, he came up with medicines for his patients. One of his notable ones was the Moxie Nerve Food, which he came up with about 1876. It was supposed to help with nervousness, energy, and appetite. He even claimed that it could help with alcoholism. Moxie was made with a unique ingredient called gentian root. It's said to be really bitter. Now this root had been medicinally used and apparently cured many ailments. Therefore, Thompson used it in his tonic. Now here's an ad from 1887. So apparently he had a huge practice. He was helping the poor, so he didn't make a lot of money with his practice. It was around this time that Thompson decided to focus on selling his patent medicines. He had a few that he was working on. Now, this ad from 1894 that we just saw, it actually claims that it's not really a medicine, but more like a healthful beverage. Notice that the address says 68 Beverly Street in Boston. And I'm assuming this photo is this address. I looked it up and there's not much left of Beverly Street. This building is 80 Beverly and I'm pretty sure this is not what the street looked like in 1894. So moving on, I mentioned that Dr. Thompson had two boys. Their names are Francis Edward Thompson and Harry Augustine Thompson. Now by this time in our story, the boys are approaching their 30s and they're working with their dad and he's preparing to retire soon and pass the business on to the boys. As we approach the turn of the century, Moxie apparently is selling more beverages than Coca-Cola, if you can imagine that. They must be doing pretty well because here in 1901, there's a story in the paper about Francis having some adventures on his yacht. Now this 1901 article says that Dr. Augustine Thompson, originator of Moxie, was obliged to surrender his office of general manager owing to his large and growing practice. So I guess he went back to his practice. It also mentions that Francis, or Frank, is president here in 1901. Harry is the treasurer. Here in June of 1903, operation on Dr. Thompson successful, apparently having a carbuncle removed from the back of his neck. So I had to go find out what a carbuncle is. It's a severe abscess. Carbuncles form when one or more hair follicles gets infected. They fill with pus and they keep growing larger and larger until they're drained. This says that it was a most difficult and serious operation, but it says that he was resting comfortably. Well, three days later he died, so apparently something went wrong there. He was 67 years old. His obituary says that he was in the Civil War. He was known for his abundant energy. It says that he worked 30 years, 18 hours a day, never taking a vacation. He was also a prolific writer, writing several books and dramas. So now the boys are running the business with a guy named Frank Archer. Now Frank Archer had been with the company quite some time already. Francis is still the president. Frank Archer is the vice president at this point, and Harry Thompson is still the treasurer. In 1906, the Pure Food and Drug Act cracked down on patent medicines, and Moxie officially changed from being a patent medicine to a soft drink. It was marketed as a delicious blend of bitter and sweet, 
a drink to satisfy everyone's taste. The drink is said to taste kind of like root beer with a bitter aftertaste. Now, this 1910 newspaper article says that Moxie is the first large concern in this country to equip traveling salesmen with automobiles starting 12 years ago. I honestly did not know that cars were available to the public before 1900, but I guess they were. It also claims to be the largest bottlers of any one soft drink in the world, which is interesting because I would have thought the Coca-Cola would have taken that position by now. Even if they weren't truly the top bottler, it was close enough that they felt that they could make this claim. Now this claims that Moxie spends $200,000 for advertising, which brings me to the Moxie horse mobiles. Now this is Frank Archer's idea as a gimmick to get the company more publicity. It's half horse, half car. They manufactured a few dozen of these through the 30s. And I'm not exactly sure if they were built only for rides around town by employees to advertise or if everyday people were allowed to buy one. Nowadays, they're collector's items. Now here's another kooky relic. Here's the bottle house, built in 1906. It's 32 feet tall and 10 feet in diameter. It's a moxie stand to look just like the bottle. It has since been moved from the original location to the Matthews Museum in Maine, and it still stands. Archer had other marketing ideas as well, like getting celebrity endorsements, such as baseball celebrity Ted Williams. Now, by this point in the story, they have two big manufacturing factories in Boston and in New York. So here in 1928, there's a car accident involving all three of them, the, the two brothers and Frank Archer, and they're all riding in a car, and they were in a pretty serious accident colliding with another car. Archer had broken his collarbone, Francis hurt his back, and it says that the cars were then demolished. Still, in 1928, the new Moxie trucks, it says, will be used for dispensing ice-cold Moxie at fairs and other gatherings. Here's an ad that they ran a lot during 1929. In 1931, Moxie acquired the Pure Oxia Company, and Francis remains president. Also in 1931, Moxie is listed in this ad as Drink of the Nation. I started noticing during the 30s that Moxie showed up in the bowling and horseshoe scores. So there were a few leagues formed during this time. And I actually see the horseshoe league into the 1960s. I guess it was during the 30s that they decided to sell Moxie in large 26 ounce bottles. Here in 1938, there's a little write-up showing Frank Archer announcing the new price plan to the sales crew. The next year, in 1939, Francis died. I know this says 1943, but here's the newspaper. His obituary says that he claims to have personally sold the first bottle of Moxie, which his dad formulated. It also mentions that he managed an orange grove in Florida as a young man. It also mentions his love for yachting. He never had kids. So from what I understand, it was right around this time that the family sold the business. Moxie keeps trucking along, but it seems that its popularity started to decline in the 1940s. Here in 1948, there's a new president named Walter Buck. Here's a photo of the Moxie bottle for reference. In 1953, Harry Thompson died. It says that he retired from treasurer in 1944 after serving for 50 years. So shifting gears around this time, there is a company called Monarch Citrus Products Company. I see them in the 1940s selling fruit juices, but there is very little else that I could find on it. Now Wikipedia claims that Monarch was founded in 1965 by Frank Armstrong from Georgia. But that is not correct because Monarch was producing beverages like mine in the 50s and 60s. So anyway, Frank bought Monarch, Moxie, and New Grape, making the new company name, get this, Moxie Monarch New Grape. He moved all manufacturing to Doraville, Georgia. And I just wanted to point out that these two newspaper articles also make the claim that Moxie outsold Coca-Cola years ago. So I guess all those claims that they were making were true. In 2007, Monarch sold Moxie 
to Cornucopia Beverages of Bedford, New Hampshire, which is owned by Coca-Cola. So Moxie is still sold, but its popularity really doesn't go outside the New England area. Moxie was designated as the official soft drink of the state of Maine in 2005. In fact, there's a loyal fan base there, and they have a Moxie festival in Maine every July. Make Mine Moxie was the nation's first commercial jingle. Here's a clip of the three-minute song. Now on to my bottles that started this whole mess. The first one is called Chocolate Soldier. It's a chocolate flavored beverage made by Monarch Citrus Products Company. And according to this, it was only around in the 1960s. It was also bottled in Mexico. This other bottle is a soft drink called Brownie. It looks like one of the seven dwarfs is the mascot. There's not a lot on this product either. And this says that the trademark was registered in 1968 and it expired in 1992, being a similar beverage to Yoohoo. I bought this bottle because I've never heard of it and I thought that Brownie was a hilarious name for a drink. Monarch Beverages is still in business. It now focuses on international markets where it does most of its business, with brands like Kickapoo Joy Juice, Bubble Up, Suncrest, and New Grape is still with them. Here's some of the current and former brands that they had. Speaking of New Grape, a quick history. New Grape was created in 1906, but it wasn't bottled until 1921. In 1933, National New Grape Company was formed in Atlanta, Georgia. The old New Grape factory still stands, and it's really hard to find New Grape anymore. Only certain places sell it in the United States. Now I have a new grape bottle, it's probably from right around 1950. As for trying to date the new grape bottles, according to this collector, he believes that the one to the left is more closer to the 20s and 30s, the one in the middle is about 1946, and the green one is from 1950. I found moxie bottles from all different ages. They even had hutches. As far as dating these, Obviously, since it changed from Moxie Nerve Tonic to a soft drink in 1906, the words Nerve Food would only appear before 1906. I found a couple of people's collections and these are pretty neat. Yeah, I can definitely see some hutches in there. Now this one's cool, but I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of when people paint the words on the bottles like this. But anyways, that's all I've got for today. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.